many unique programs in England. The most beautiful country on earth, three most livable cities in Canada, over 14,000 graduates, and 20 unique programs in English. Welcome to Canada. Welcome to Sprachal Language College. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to SSLC's live webinar series. My name is Ilias and I'm the Pathway Program Manager here at SSLC. I'm joining you live uh, from Vancouver today. So, uh, sorry about the delay today. We, we've had some technical issues, uh, but we are live now. So uh, welcome, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. Uh, today, we have our Pathway partner, Capilano University, joining us. And uh, Christian uh, from Capilano University will be uh, here shortly. We'll just uh, uh, invite him on stage. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Capilano University's uh, programs, uh, admission requirements, application procedures, and how you can easily transition from our uh, SSLC's uh, pathway program, EPE, to Capilano University. So uh, we'll, we'll tell you the detailed information uh, about um, um, both uh, SSLC's uh, pathway program and uh, Kaplan University's um, programs. So Christian should join us uh, shortly. There, there he is. Hi, Christian. How are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good. Thanks. Uh, sorry about the delay today. We've had some technical issues. Uh, we were we usually play our uh, intro video uh, in the beginning of our webinars, but uh, we've had some. Uh, uh, problems, I guess, uh, but that's okay. We are here now. Um, so, Christian, why don't you uh, quickly introduce yourself? Tell us uh, a bit about yourself, and okay. then uh, we can go right into your presentation. And then I'll be asking you some questions, and then uh, we can take questions from our uh, audience. Uh, we can invite them on stage uh, and take their questions live, or they can just simply. Uh, enter their questions on the chat box, or they can just go to the Ask a Question tab and ask their questions from there. So why don't we get to know you first? Okay, so my name is Christian Cano. I am the International Recruitment Manager at Capilano University. I work at the Center for International Experience. Uh, I'm originally from Colombia. I've been here in Canada for about 17 years, and I've been working at Capilano University for the last, almost six years now. So wow. yeah, so it's been quite a, lot of, a long time here in Canada with Capilano. <laughs> 
And uh, we've known each other, I guess, for the last uh, four years or so since I, I started so. this LC. And yes. we, uh, we, we, although we're both in Vancouver with Christian, uh, we see each other more uh, overseas than yes. we see each other in Vancouver. In Vancouver yes. uh, but um, Christian, uh, when we uh, were uh, running uh, our school in, in class, when we had uh, uh, our classes running, um, in our campuses, uh, he would come to our uh, campus and uh, we would hold info sessions with our current students and uh, also prospective students. Uh, and last time you were in our Vancouver campus was, I guess, in February. Uh, but now, I guess, in the oh, new yeah. normal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> feel so long ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, I have some exciting news today, actually. Uh, we will be um, returning to our campuses. Uh, uh, on July 6th uh, in Vancouver oh, wow. and Victoria, actually, yes. Uh, for Toronto, uh, we don't have the same news yet, but uh, for Vancouver and our Victoria campuses, we'll be uh, back in our classes and our students uh, can uh, come and study uh, starting July 6th. So that's, uh, that's something new uh, for us and for our audience today. Um, why don't we um, start with your presentation. Let's get to know uh, Kaplan University, uh, what programs Kaplan offers, and uh, I'm sure you'll be uh, touching base on your admission requirements, your application procedures. And then if I have uh, questions, um, I'll be, uh, I might interrupt you from time to time. I'm not sure why your screen is blinking at me. Okay, so that's, no, I also see it blinking. Okay, I thought it was only me. Let me just see. Let me just close it and do it again. Okay. I don't know what what's happening there. Oh, it's not giving me the option to. Okay, so stop sharing. Let's do it again. Okay. There. It's fine now. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So. Um, so I see that we have people from so many places around the world. Uh, I think like people are in different countries. Right. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit first about Canada. Uh, so one thing when you people are thinking about Canada, a lot, a lot of us feel like uh, Canada is very far away. It's very north. It's very cold. So I like to show this because it kind of gives you an idea that it's not as bad as, it, as people think it is. Um, most most Canadian cities are in the south of Canada, and so that means that most Canadians live in the south. We don't really live like we don't have that many people living in the north, in the North Pole or in those areas. Uh, mm -hmm. So most of us live in the south. And when you compare Canadian cities to European cities, you notice that we have a very similar latitude. So, for example, Vancouver has a very similar latitude of, uh, as Paris, and Toronto as Nice in France, and Montreal as Venice. So when you compare us, uh, just because we're the last country in the Americas, so it looks like we're very far, very north, but when you look at the Canadian cities, we're actually like as similar as most European cities. Or something like one thing that I was surprised is, but Saskatoon is very similar to Berlin, and London as Calgary. So we're not so, as north as, as people think that we are. We are closer than they think, actually. Yes, <laughs> yes. So. It is. Uh, it is. So yeah, it's not as it's not as far north as people think that we are compared to yeah European cities. Um, when when you're choosing to to start in Canada, so like now that we've got the geographic part, um, when you're choosing to to come to Canada, one thing that I like to mention is we have a very high quality of education here. And uh, I mean, like even during this like during these times, we've been able to show really really high quality of education. It's a very welcoming environment. We have people from all over the world here in Canada, and um, and, and we're happy to say that like, it's a very multicultural environment. And Canadians usually, uh, like most Canadians, are unless you're indigenous, they come from a different background, they come from a different country. So it's a, so and everybody's very proud of their heritage. Uh, it's a safe environment. It's a very safe country. Canada is a place where you can like walk around in the streets, and it's you're gonna be safe. Um, we have also the opportunities to get work experience. You can work 20 hours per week while you're studying, and you can also get a postgraduate work permit after graduation. So if you come to university and you finish your program, you can apply for a postgraduate work permit of up to three years if you finish a two-year diploma or a four-year bachelor degree. 
Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is the low cost of education. We have uh, our programs, um, like when you compare Canada with uh, places like the US, uh, the, the, the UK, Australia, Ireland, uh, we have a very high quality of education and it's much more, uh, it's much more cost, the cost is lower. So that's something that is also something to consider. Um, now, I'm just to, when we're talking about Vancouver, because uh, like now, like we look, Canada is a great place to come. Like we have a high, a high standard of education, but when things that we have here in British Columbia and here in Vancouver, first of all, is we, we're part of the BC transfer system. We have our own Ministry of Education here in British Columbia, and um, and it's very and, and and I mean, like let's say that you find this presentation very exciting and you decide to come to CAP, but maybe. When you arrive, this is not the place for you, or maybe you chose somewhere else, but then you was well, not the place for you. It's very easy to transfer your credits from one university or college to another one. So we have lots of students that maybe arrive to one place in what, the first year, and then they transfer to a second place on the second year or on the third year. Um, the other thing is that Vancouver is the third largest city in Canada. So it's a very, it's still a very, like, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's not as Toronto that is the, the biggest one, but we still, it's a, still a big city. It's still lots of things to do here. Uh, you have lots of, uh, lots of things to, to, to get to know, um, but it's also not as big as other cities. So actually, I like that. But I like that is, I like that it's not gigantic, but it still feels like you're in a big city. That there are things happening here that, that you don't feel like you're in a small little town. Um, the weather is very mild, uh, so that's actually why a lot of people are here in Vancouver because we we like the weather here. I mean, like it does rain, it does get uh, like in, during the, during the winter, but we don't have very um, very extreme winters like the rest of Canada. So we clearly see snow, and we usually see the spring earlier than everybody else. I mean, when the quarantine started we were already starting a spring while the rest of the country was in the middle of snow. So I think that for us, that was actually very good mentally because <laughs> at least the flowers and the weather was, it was getting a little bit nicer while we were looking at the rest of Canada dealing with the pandemic and with, with the winter. Yes, weather was cooperating with us. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's an excellent tourist destination. It's a beautiful place. So lots of people want to come here. We're next to the ocean and the mountains, so that makes it really exciting because you get to explore in the, um, in, the in nature. You can go to the mountains. You can go to things by the by the beach in the ocean. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a very multicultural place, and we're also close to other places that you can visit. So when you come to Vancouver, you're not, you're not just coming to Vancouver. You can drive to Whistler, Victoria, to Fino. You can also go to the U.S. to go to Seattle, Portland, and even the Rocky Mountains. So lots of lots of cool places to visit around here. And if you have a little bit more time and a little bit more money, if you want to fly, it's very easy to fly to the Yukon. So if you want to go see the Northern Lights, uh, California, uh, Mexico, you can even go to yeah, like to like, like lots of lots of places in, in Mexico for very cheap and very fast. And then also Hawaii. So that's another place that if, if you want if you get a little bit tired of the of the rain, then you can just mm-hmm. go and spend a few days in Hawaii. So that's basically all of the things that you can do around here. Um, so actually, I'll get uh, Jem to share the video now, if we, if we can. Sure. Let's, uh, Jem, can we play the video quickly? Or should I do it from here? Uh, let's see what's... Or, or you can play from your computer. That's also okay. Okay. Okay, let's do that. I just don't know if the sound will come because I'm wearing the headphones, but... It just gives you an idea of what the campus looks like. Maybe you can take off the, your um, earphones. Headphones? Okay. Headphones. There you go.
So just so this video just gives you an idea what it's like to to come to Capilano, just what the campus looks like. I'm gonna show you okay, just uh, just why I like to share that in a little bit. Um, but just important information about the, the campus of Capilano is we were we were we're a public university. We were founded in 1968, and we're a teaching and learning university. So one thing that is important to know is that we don't have we're like our main focus is, is undergrad programs. Uh, we don't do research, and we don't we don't have research in the university, so we don't really have master programs or PhD programs like Capilano. So it's very focused on more technical programs, and and and, very, and, and it's very teaching focused. So um, we have our campuses in North Vancouver. We also have a student residence. So that's a big thing for us because we don't have a, like sometimes Vancouver can be a little bit competitive when we're looking for places to live. Um, we have about 9,000 students and close to 2,500 international students from over, from over 80 countries. Uh, we're about 20 to 40 minutes away from downtown Vancouver, and we offer diplomas, degrees, and postgraduate studies. And the average class size is about 25 to 30 students, maximum 40, and for the English for Academic purposes is maximum 22. And we're also the first public institution in British Columbia to have American accreditation. So it is... Um, we're part of the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities. So lots of reasons to come to CAP. So these are like the important things about us. Um, so when you're looking at a, at, a, at, a, uh, at a location, so I'm just gonna go with my mouse, here it is. So we are located right here in North Vancouver, like very close to Lynn Valley. Um, North Vancouver, we like to say that is the playground of Vancouver because this is a place where a lot of people that live in Vancouver come to spend their free time. Uh, so we have a uh, Grouse Mountain, a uh, Cypress Mountain, and Mount Seymour. So these are places that are busy all year round. You can go there either in the winter to ski, snowboard, and during the summertime, you can go hiking. So those are places that are visited all the time. We also have Deep Cove. That's another place where you can go hiking. And then we, that place is next to the ocean. So you can go kayaking, paddle boarding, and then, of course, Capilano Suspension Bridge. That's a place that a lot of people usually um, um, ask me about because we have the same name. Uh, so people think that Capilano Suspension Bridge, it's, uh, it's located in our campus or next to our campus. It's not that close, but we're still in the same neighborhood. So it's a beautiful place to go and explore for sure. Um, so our main campus right here in North Vancouver, we have a small campus that we opened in January. It's right here in Lonsdale. And then we also have our student residence right here, very close to our main campus. Uh, downtown Vancouver is right here. So as I said, from downtown Vancouver to our main campus, it could take about like 20 to 40 minutes away in public transportation. And then to our, to our um, Lons LT, you can, you, can take our, um, you can take a sea bus and that would be like a 15 minute uh, sea bus ride to, over the ocean to, to get to, the, to, the, to our smaller campus. So it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's a place where you can go and explore a lot, a lot of things. Um, really, 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 really beautiful. Uh, so now when we're talking about CAP, why why come to CAP? Why, what, what, is, what, what, what do we have? <laughs> so, well, first of all, the location is in Vancouver. So like you get to live in a, one of the best cities in the world. It's known as one of the best places to live in the world. Um, our campus is just a stunning campus. It's beautiful. I, I showed you the video earlier, so you get an idea of what the campus looks like. Because it's quite hard to take a picture because we have or, or we have lots of trees. Our trees are taller than our buildings, so it is quite challenging for us to take a, a, a picture of what the whole campus looks like. But we have about like eight to nine buildings mm -hmm. in this area. Um, what I like about this is that like, you're in the middle of a forest. So even when we like a few months ago when COVID-19 was starting and then you kept watching the news and everything seems so scary and, and stressful. I, I found it very relaxing to be in campus and then just whenever I found myself stressed, I will just go and walk in the forest and just take a little bit of air and try to relax myself. And I think about the students during the stressful times that they have during final exams and when you're working in group projects and when you have a lot of homework it's just really nice to be able to be in a place like this where you can just go into the forest and just take a little bit of a breather so you can continue with your day i think it's a really it's i, th I thought it was a great place to be during stressful times and also during nice times it's really nice 
Um, and an, and an interesting fact: uh, all the buildings are named after a tree, right? Exactly. Yeah. So all of our trees are so so all of our buildings are named, named after trees. Most mm -hmm. of them. We do have three exceptions: the mm -hmm. library building, <laughs> place, <laughs> and the Nathan Flora Center for Film and Animation. I see. Okay. Yes. Uh, so we also, as I mentioned, we have the student accommodations, um, quality of education, you're going to a public university. So one thing that I'd like to talk about here about going to a public university is that you do, you, you have, you, you have basically the guaranteed from the government that while you're studying, it's something that, you, that we have, that we have in demand. So one of the things about going to a public university is that when the, because we are funded by the government, the programs that we run are programs that we usually have that we that we have that we have need of for people to work in that area. So, for example, we have a tourism program and a film and animation program. So we ha we have those programs because we have a big industry uh, of tourism and also film and animation here in Vancouver. So we need people to work in those fields. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, in Vancouver, we don't really have. Uh, anything related to petroleum or oil uh, because we don't have a, an oil industry but if you go to alberta you're going to see that they have lots of pro lots of programs related to the oil industry so we usually here in canada the government uh, funds universities to run programs where there is a, a demand for work in that area where we actually have an industry in that area so we, that's why we don't have petroleum engineering here <laughs> um Practical experience, so as I mentioned, lots of, lots of our programs are very practical. You also have lots of lots of programs that include scops, work practicums, so you get to have uh, the experience that you need, uh, so you can be industry ready. Uh, teaching focus, so the, the, the main job for teachers is to teach. So unlike a research university, our teachers are not doing any kind of research; they are teaching mm -hmm. on the students, and their main job is to connect with the students and of, and support them. And it's also easier for for them because they're working in the smaller classrooms. So, like an, in, a, in a research university, you have like 200, 300 students. Here at CAP, we have about like as I mentioned earlier, 25 to 35 students, maximum 40. So it's easier for the teachers to actually get to know the students better. And the teachers are industry experts; they have many years of experience in their industry. So I'll go over our programs. Because this is what lots of people want to know. What do we have at CAP? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll start with the biggest faculty, uh, mm -hmm. business administration. Uh, we have in, in business, we have our uh, bachelor degree. We have five areas where you can specialize. We have accounting, marketing, finance, human resources, international and international business. So here we have diplomas, so two-year diplomas, and also four-year bachelor degrees. But mm -hmm. students usually come for the four-year bachelor degrees. And then same thing in communications, we have our diploma and our bachelor degree. So one thing that is very nice about CAP is that we do have, like we have more bachelor degrees than let's say a college, but we, because we used to be a college, we also have that spirit. So most of our bachelor degrees, you can make them into a two-year diploma. So you don't have to do the four-year degree. But if you wanna get a four-year degree, then you also have that option. So that's the- I love this question. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say they have uh, 60 credits from elsewhere or, uh, from overseas, they have maybe associate degree, like two year degree. Can they complete their uh, degrees to bachelor's degree at Capilano? Is this possible? It is possible, mm -hmm. but it's it's quite a, it's a little bit of um of a process. I see. Because usually we don't if the student is coming from outside of British Columbia, actually, mm -hmm. not, not just outside of Canada, but like mm -hmm. British Columbia, we have to see. Mm -hmm. We, we, the student has to apply first, be accepted, and then they have to do a credit transfer application afterwards. So we're gonna have mm -hmm. to look at their credits, where do they study, for how long, how many hours per week, which mm -hmm. textbooks they use, and then we can see if we can transfer the credit. So in some cases I say it's worth it because you might save us some money. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean like, we'll have to look at each student. It's gonna be a different case for each student. I see. And uh, I believe this is a separate application with a separate application fee for this uh, or no. no? So like it's a different application. It's a transfer credit application, but okay. we're not going to charge anything extra. Or, oh, so is it like part of the regular application fee? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So it's, so it's fine. We don't, we, don't, we don't charge them extra for transferring credits. All right. 
Okay, and then for in business, we also have our business or our North American business management post baccalaureate diplomas. So these ones are very popular for students that already finish university in their countries mm -hmm. and get interested in starting business. In this area, we have four different specializations. We have uh, international business, we have marketing, we have human resources, and also finance. Uh, we, are, we call it NABU, just to make it short, because it's a long name. We have lots of long names in our, for, for our programs. So mm -hmm. North American Business Management, uh, it's a four, it's a, it's a, the, it's a one-year program. And then with this one, you, can, you are eligible to apply for a one-year postgraduate work permit. Mm -hmm. The most popular program that we have in this area is the North American Business Management Applied. Mm -hmm. This one is exactly the same. It's three terms of classes. So that will be about 12 months of classes mm -hmm. and then a four-month practicum. And that 12 months uh, should be consecutive, like back-to-back -back three semesters? They usually are, unless you start in January. If you start in January, then the students usually take a break in the summer of about two months. So if a student starts in September, they don't have any breaks. They basically mm -hmm. finish in 16 months. But if you start in January, then you finish 18 months because you have a two-month break in the summer. I see. Thank you. Okay. And then, so for this one, it's also eligible for a, it's eligible for a three-year postgraduate work permit. So that one is usually a very popular one because you study basically for like 12 months of classes, four months of work practicum, and then you can go and start working and get your work experience. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the North American and International Management. This is a two year program. It's, we do it in partnership with the University of Hertfordshire in the UK. Mm -hmm. So it is exactly the same for the first two terms. On the fourth term, they, go, they come back to Capilano and take courses focused in international management. And on the fifth term, they go to the UK, to the University of Hertfordshire. And on the sixth term, they do their thesis. So when they graduate, they get a graduate diploma of North American Business Management from Capilano University. Mm -hmm. And they get a Master's of Science in International Business from uh, the University of Hertfordshire. And because they did a two-year program at Capilano, they can, they're also eligible to apply for a three-year postgraduate work permit. Nice. So they get a dual, so they get a diploma and a degree, master's degree from master's UK. Degree. Yes. Okay. That's that's nice. Yeah. So it's a really good option. Mm -hmm. um, now for motion picture arts. So this is also one of our most famous faculties. Mm -hmm. We have our motion picture arts diploma and bachelor degree. So if you're interested in film, like being a director, a screenwriter, uh, editor, producer. Mm -hmm. This is a really good program. It is. Uh, it also has the option to do a two-year diploma or a four-year mm -hmm. four bachelor degree. Mm -hmm. We also have a state-of-the-art facility in film. We have the biggest film studio in a university in Canada. So we're very proud of that. We have a, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful facility. We also have. We also offer animation. We have two D and three D animation diplomas. Uh, we also have mm -hmm. costuming, digital visual effects, and documentary. So as I said earlier. Film and animation are a big industry for us here in Vancouver. Even like now that we reopen in the economy, film is going to be one of the economies that is, is one of the industries that is opening in the next phase. So we're, it's it's, right. it's, a, it's huge. It's very important for our economy. So that's why mm -hmm. it, we have lots of opportunities here in film. And even during the pandemic, animation the pro, animation departments and digital visual effects have still like a lot of people have, were able to continue working from home. So right. they were not really affected that much by the pandemic. Uh, then performing arts. So CAP is a, is a very, it's known for its uh, performing arts. We have uh, our, we have a diploma, a bachelor and a diploma in jazz studies. And we have two streams. We have composition and education. We also offer a music diploma, arts and entertainment management. So if you maybe don't, don't play an instrument or don't sing or act, but you want to work in that industry, you can work in, you can take the, the business approach for the, mm -hmm. you take the diploma. We also have acting for the stage and the screen, musical theater, technical theater, and conducting. So basically this program is, we have lots of artistic people on, on our campus. So even if you're coming to say for business or something else, you do get to see these students singing, dancing, acting around campus. So they bring a lot of personality to our campus. So you, you'll get used to them. It's, they, they bring a lot of fun to the campus. <laughs> then we also have our a school, of this, uh, a school of Design. We have a program called Design and Visual Communication. So it's very similar to graphic design, but we don't like to say that it's graphic design because it has a lot of illustration. Mm -hmm. So actually, the, the, the program is known in Vancouver as the IDEA program. And IDEA stands for Illustration, Design, Elements, and Applications. 
Um, this is a four-year bachelor degree. It's one of our most competitive programs. You do have to have a portfolio to get into that program, as well as our animation programs. We do, we do require portfolios. The Christian, I have a quick mm -hmm. question. Yes. Uh, students studying 2D and 3D animation, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, because it's you only offer a diploma, can they transfer yeah. to a uh, visual design uh, bachelor's degree program after that? No, no, they no. usually just finish with the diploma. And to be honest, a lot of the students that study animation, they're not interested in doing visual communication afterwards. Okay. So they want to work as animators in the industry. And visual mm -hmm. communication is more for people that want to work in the advertising industry. Right. So it's like, usually they're not really thinking of that. Although we are, Capilano is planning to expand some of its bachelor degrees. So we're mm -hmm. hoping that we'll have a bachelor in animation in the coming in the, in the near future, not sure mm -hmm. when, <laughs> but we were, we, were, we were hoping to release a, a bachelor of animation in the next few years. I see, thank you. Um, we do have also our tourism de our department. This is a huge, this is actually our oldest faculty. Uh, they have a lot of experience in, in, in British Columbia. We have our bachelor of tourism management and we are the only public university that has a bachelor of tourism management in Vancouver. So we're very proud of that one. We have two streams. We have adventure tourism and hotel and resort management. We also have two diploma programs. We have the tourism management co-op and also a diploma for uh, tourism management that is specifically for international students. Then we also have our outdoor recreation diploma. I think that that's, that one is going to be a huge industry now. It's, well, it's always been a huge industry here in, in British Columbia because people lo love the outdoors. Mm -hmm. But I think that now as we... We are trying to be outdoors more than ever. I think it's going to be a big industry here. Um, human kinetics, which is also one of the programs that we're planning to make into a bachelor degree. Right now, it's a two-year diploma that transfers to University of British Columbia, mm -hmm. but it's one of the ones that we really want to make into a bachelor degree. So that one probably very soon we'll be able to announce it. Do they uh, from human kinetics? Do they go into like kinesiology or something like that? Yeah, so they go to kinesiology at UBC. All right. Then we also have our global stewardship, although this program actually canceled. Um, so yeah, let's forget about that one. <laughs> but then we also have our post baccalaureate diploma in global hospitality and tourism management. So this is a, it's very similar to the North American business management applied program. Mm -hmm. It is 12 months of courses, four months of practicum, and then you can apply for a, four, for a three year postgraduate work permit. Mm -hmm. And this is for people that already finish a bachelor degree in their home countries. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a really, a really good option. Christian, for the practicum part, is it like a paid internship for students? And do you help students uh, find a job or do they have to okay. find their own? That's a good question. So mm -hmm. for a tourism management co-op, that one it is a paid internship. It's mm -hmm. a paid, like co-op is usually paid. Co uh, mm -hmm. For the other ones, it's unpaid. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit shorter. Well, actually, for global hospitality, it's still four months too. But it, mm -hmm. it is unpaid. The one thing that we that, that we that we've seen in some cases is that sometimes the unpaid uh, the unpaid work practicums mm -hmm. are uh, offer really good opportunities to the students. So sometimes mm -hmm. it might be unpaid, but it's actually like a little bit of a higher position, mm -hmm. so they're able to get a little bit of a, 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 a few, a, a, some better positions. Yes, and they they get their networking there, and once they graduate, they're yeah. able to you know they'll find jobs easier, I believe. Yeah. So I mean, like. Normally, or students, I mean, like right now, this is a this is a different year. But I mean, our mm -hmm. students usually have employment. Like ninety percent of our students have employment before mm -hmm. graduation. In the case of wow. employment, because of the co-ops and the practicums, so they're and, our, and the students are in high demand. And I mean, like same thing, tourism is a program that will be. I mean, like like even though right now we're going through a difficult situation, mm -hmm. we're seeing that tourism is still active that people like people in Vancouver are dying to go to other cities to go to the island to go to the Okanagan and right. so from the interior so we're still traveling and I think as, as things become more and more normal mm -hmm. tourism will pick up I mean like a lot of people are still are, are doing some trips now so we think yeah, that it definitely will be, will be, will be proud, right? definitely okay so now uh, early childhood care and education Mm -hmm. This is also one of our very special programs. We're the only public university in Vancouver that accepts international students. We have a diploma program and also a bachelor degree. 
Um, we also have a pathway that transfers from uh, from its project. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a bachelor of music therapy, but early childhood care is also like right now it's one of the essential businesses, essential professions that we have in the in the in the in, in this in the country in the world. We really need somebody to take care of kids. Uh, <laughs> so it is it's a very it's a very nice program, and they have lots of. Uh, like they have also they, they, they try to take different uh, approaches also with teaching. We have people that actually have work in daycares that are like outdoor daycares, so actually using that with them that our winters are mild. So we actually have some outdoor daycares so kids are more connected to nature. So they do really, really, really interesting things. And uh, there's a huge demand in uh, EC educators, uh, especially in BC. So yes, uh, I'm sure if, uh, right after they graduate from Kaplan, they'll they'll almost guarantee a job out there. Yes, they have. Yeah, there is high employment, and even right now, I think it's going to be even higher because now that I mean, like, I'm, I'm, this is my assumption. I haven't read this or seen, mm -hmm. but like, I'm, I'm assuming now that we're gonna that we're trying to keep things with the smaller numbers. You know that we mm -hmm. because of social distancing. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming that we you are not going to be able to have as many kids as before. So I'm mean, like, I don't know. This is my assumption, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm assuming that maybe we'll have we'll need more uh, daycare providers or more uh, educators. Exactly. So exactly. we can keep kids distance from each other. Right. Uh, Christian, there's a quick question from Samira, actually. Uh, maybe we can quickly answer this before we go on to humanities and social science. Mm -hmm. uh, Samira is asking, very often young adults do not know what to take in university. Is it possible to transfer from one program to another? Do we have guidance counselors at Caplano to help students? Yes. So let's yeah. say I I came to Capilano. I started with business, but uh, I figured that uh, I'm not really good at business. So I want to study maybe tourism, hospitality, or maybe I want to go into humanities or something else. Is this possible to transfer in between faculties? Yes. Yeah, so it is it is it is possible to transfer credits between faculties. I mean, like mm -hmm. basically, what you would do. Let's say I'm gonna try to give you a, an example from something that is different that is unrelated let's mm -hmm. say communications to tourism so that you start the mm -hmm. communications you didn't like it you want to start you want to study tourism mm -hmm. you can apply to tourism mm -hmm. and then we may be able to use some of the credits that you talk in communication as your mm -hmm. electives in the tourism so obviously mm -hmm. you cannot just if you did two years of communications you cannot transfer to the third year of tourism you're gonna right. start from the beginning but we're gonna give you some credits from that but let's say if you're doing something similar Yes. So let's say you go doing psychology and you want to study or apply behavior analysis program, mm -hmm. we'll, be, we'll be able to transfer most of the credits from mm -hmm. the psychology program to the applied behavior analysis program. So you'll be able to almost start in third year. And uh, Samira, I believe uh, this applies to many public universities and colleges in Canada. Uh, for the first, first and second year uh, courses, uh, you know, most of them are electives and most of them are transferable between um, faculties. Uh, you can use them towards your uh, degree, but uh, obviously uh, each faculty will have their own prerequisite courses, right? For example, if you're in business, you have to take calculus, you have to take uh, microeconomics, uh, macroeconomics, but when you get into tourism or maybe communication, you don't actually need those courses. Maybe those specific courses will not be counted. Uh, towards your uh, hospitality uh, diploma, but maybe you've taken um, a language course or you've taken first year English, uh, you'll definitely be able to uh, transfer those credits uh, into into any other faculties uh, within the same university. And uh, the second part, uh, the counselors, uh, we know that there are counselors uh, at Caplano, but there's also the Center for International Experience where you are located. So you give them specific guiding for international students, but they can also join or they can also go and see regular counselor, right? Student so, advisor. So actually we have at, at, the, at the Center for International Experience, we have the admissions advisor. So these are the okay. people that are helping you to get accepted. But if once you're accepted and you don't know what courses to take, you mm -hmm. do have to go to speak with the academic advisor. So one thing is that the, like the university, like all the services that the university offers are for all, in, all are for all students. So our academic advisors will mm -hmm. also help international students, and sometimes they also have people that speak different languages, so they can also help the students from different places. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Okay. okay, and then I'll move to humanities and social sciences. 
So we have our applied behavior analysis program. And then I actually hear that the, the big thing about um, uh, our humanities and social sciences here is that, as I mentioned earlier, Capilano used to be a college and we're keeping that, but we still have that, uh, that college spirit, even though we're a university. So mm -hmm. in, we do have two bachelor degrees, applied behavior analysis. This is for people that wanna work with people that have autism. And then we also have our Bachelor of Liberal Studies, which is basically a make your own degree. It's for people that are interested in different areas of, in the humanities, and they just wanna like wanna make it and then and apply it in different ways. So this in this case, actually, you do need a lot of academic advising because, mm -hmm. and then also your teachers are gonna be very involved because they're gonna be helping you choose the courses and also mm -hmm. projects that are gonna be based on what you're interested in. So it's, it's a little bit hard to explain that program sometimes because every student has a different experience. Not everybody, not, not, a, not two students are gonna have the same experience because we have students that are interested in, you know, like, like let's say gender studies, or we mm -hmm. have students that are more interested in philosophy or sociology. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be very different for each student. And they're also gonna be working on projects that are gonna be based on what they're interested in. So it's a very interesting program. But then also we have the Associate of Arts. So the Associate of Arts are two year programs and it's, it's perfect for people that are, like, are gonna start a program, but they're planning to either transfer to University of British Columbia or Simon Fraser University, or they can transfer to us to apply behavior analysis or liberal studies. Uh, so if you're interested, let's say in, in economics, political studies, sociology, and but, but maybe you really wanna focus more in that area, you could transfer to UBC or SFU. So we still have that college spirit of like university transfer options. Mm -hmm. And then same thing for science and technology. So we have our associate degree in biology. Uh, we, also, we have a certificate and diploma in engineering. So this is for people that are going to transfer to UBC and SFU. That's, this is their main plan. And then also in different areas. So if you, the, the general associate of science degree, which but they can focus in astronomy, chemistry, computing science, mathematics, physical geography, or physics. So lots of areas. So if you would wanna go to UBC or SFU, you could start with us. Lots of reasons to take these programs with us. Main one, especially if you're an international student, cost, it's much cheaper to study with us. I mean, like with UBC, if I'm not wrong, it's it could be like it's something in science, it could be about $40,000 a year. And right. with us, it would be about $20,000 a year. So you save about $40,000 by studying with us. And we still a public university, the standards are still the same. Uh, but you know, the other thing is you're gonna be in a smaller group, a smaller classroom. Mm -hmm. So it's a great opportunity for those people that are gonna be, that are like maybe like need a little bit more help from their teachers. We, our teachers have office hours, so you get to connect with the teachers a little bit more. Um, the other thing is, I mean, like I, I was a, a student that came, <laughs> that came to Canada, like I came very young to Canada, and I know what it's like to come to a big place especially when you don't when English is not your first language and then you want to and then you want to make friends and I think it's really it's easier to make friends when you're going to a smaller classroom and then you get to work with a, with a, with a small group of people than when you're in a big auditorium for at least for me I don't think that I will have been the same experience it will have been a little bit more scary for me to go to a bigger university so that's why I like the smaller classrooms <laughs> And uh, you get used to the college or university system. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you know, you learn how to choose your courses. You know what to select, how to schedule yeah. your, um, uh, you know, own courses. You know, you you yeah. you learn those skills uh, mm -hmm. before you get to a big university. Exactly. Yeah. Because so I've, I've done the same. I, I've studied at SFU, but uh, beforehand uh, I went to a college. I went to the Wangari College here, mm -hmm. so uh, I learned a lot of things there. I spent uh, two years there, and then I was able to transfer to SFU, and uh, it yeah. helps you a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, this is all, all what we have. We also have EAP, but we do have. I'm gonna go about the like English for academic purposes in the in our admissions part. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like here in admissions, one thing that I say is you have Elias who can help you because I think all of our programs have very different admission requirements. Mm -hmm. um, we have programs that are that are uh, that like, for example, a business. We will ask you for high school graduation, your English language requirement, and your mathematics. But maybe if you want to study animation, we're going to look for an interview and we're going to look for a portfolio. Or if you want to do music, we're going to ask you for an audition. Mm -hmm. um, now, anything that and all the admission requirements, we all we always have ways to help you. So if mm -hmm. you have to do an audition, we can do we can ask you we can send you the instructions of what you need to do. You film it 
and then you put it on YouTube and send us a link. Or if we have to do an interview, then like we do what we're doing right now, just do it via Skype or uh, Zoom, whatever we need, but we can also do it uh, virtually. Um, now, so we work with with uh, with uh, Sprout Show with the SSLC. Um, basically, uh, when a student completes, uh, actually, I forgot the it's, oh, it's EPE, is right? EPE, EPE, yeah, yes, EPE. Okay, yeah. For a second, I forgot it. Uh, EPE that is equivalent of an IELTS of five point five for Capilano University. So, in that case, if the student is in that level, you will be coming to our first level or to our EAP on I know which is 16 hours of English per week, and you can take one academic course in business or arts and sciences. And uh, with EAP 090, that's like, that's like a full-time program. And uh, is it just one course uh, spread out through the week or do they take a couple of courses or is it just EAP 090 and it's like 15 hours per week kind of thing? So, so this one is 16 hours of English per 16. week. 16 hours. But they have the option to take one academic course. Okay. So they could take one course in business yeah. or something in the humanities or sciences. Mm -hmm. uh, in the next level, it will be 12 hours of English per week. Mm -hmm. And then they can take two academic courses. I mean, like, it's not they don't have to take them. If some students take maybe just one mm -hmm. or they don't take any academic course, they only take EAP. But they mm -hmm. have the option. I mean, most of students choose to take academic courses because they want to get to like, especially when you're doing academic courses, you're taking courses with Canadian students. Mm -hmm. So you're also like, and like you're getting used to the environment. Right. Um, we also have some pathway programs. So we have some for early childhood care and education and also for business. Mm -hmm. So um, these programs are, are like the, the, the EAP or the English part is mm -hmm. very focused in business or very focused in early childhood care and education. So we have also those options for for the students when they can when when they know exactly what they want to study. If they want to go to a different program, then we'd say just a general EAP. So if they want to study business or early childhood education, you have a specific pathway that is combined with EAP. Exactly. So they take English, and then maybe they're able to take more academic courses during your first and uh, during their first and second year uh, second semesters or exactly. Okay. Yeah, so they usually, uh, for the, for if a student does business pathway, they study the same 16 hours of English per week. Mm -hmm. But instead of one academic course, they do two academic courses. I see, okay. And then in the next level, it uh, will be the same 12 hours of English, but instead of two academic courses, they will be taking three academic courses. And uh, even though they start with additional English at Kaplan, are they able to complete their studies if they're doing bachelor's degree uh, within four years? Well, no. But they will be usually take because they're doing two in two terms. They're doing one semester of, mm -hmm. of business, let's say. So usually, if you do a four, let's say if you do the business pathway with us, mm -hmm. uh, you will finish a bachelor degree in of business in about four years and a half. I see. But okay. I mean, like it's still the same. I mean, like if the, if the student decides not to Actually, decides to, to go for the six point five. Mm -hmm. Uh, it may depend on their course load. I mean, if they take, if students take more courses, maybe, and uh, if they take courses in the summer, like full time, maybe they may be able to finish it uh, on time. But uh, still, it doesn't really matter. There is not really like first year, second year, third year in in Canada. You mm -hmm. just complete your credits basically. Towards exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, um, so okay. actually, why don't we do questions? Just because the the other part is applications, but I mean, like in the case of applications, since you're you're planning to go with SSLC, mm -hmm. you have uh, Elias at the team of at the team of SSLC right. to help you with applications. So then you can like help with that. Part. Yes. So um, maybe we can go through this quickly. So when we receive applications, obviously uh, you apply to our school SSLC. You get admitted uh, into our pathway program, EP program. So once we have your LOA from EPE. We are ready to apply to Capilano. Uh, so I, if you're in Vancouver or uh, in Victoria, I'll, I'll be uh, helping you. But uh, in Toronto, we have uh, our pathway coordinator there as well. So I'll I'll be helping you uh, uh, with your application. You know, there's a hundred thirty-five dollar application fee uh, which is paid online, and then we receive. So we receive an email right away, and then we send. 
uh, or submit uh, your high school diploma, your transcripts, your passport copy, your uh, SSLC, EPE letter of acceptance, right? Exactly. And uh, the obviously we, we will be filling in your uh, details on the applic online application form. Uh, and then uh, we will receive letter of offer from Capilano. So once we have this offer, you are expected to pay $5,000 uh, deposit. So once it's paid, then we receive the official letter of acceptance. Exactly. And then once the um, uh, once you complete your EP program, your pathway program with us, you will be sending an additional letter saying that requirements are met, right? Conditions okay. met letter, kind of. Yes. And then uh, after that, you'll be able to either apply to extend your visa or study permit within Canada, or uh, even after you get your official letter of acceptance with a condition, uh, you're ready to apply uh, for your study permit if you're overseas with SSLC's LOA and uh, Capilano's uh, conditional letter of acceptance. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get into, uh, I have a few questions here and I think uh, we have a few questions uh, from our audience. And by the way, if you guys have questions, you can join us live. We can invite you on stage. By the way, are you done, Christian, with your uh, presentation? Yeah, so I think that we can just like take the, the questions now. Sure. Um, so there's a quick question regarding tuition fees. Uh, and is there any financial support available from Kaplan? Yours? Actually, I was going to ask these questions to you. Um, can you see me, by the way? No, you. I can see myself, here. but apparently I'm not visible. Anyways, as long as you can hear me, I guess that's fine. Yeah, that is fine. Uh, can you tell us a bit about uh, international uh, tuition fees? Okay, actually, I'm gonna send you guys a link. I'm just gonna put it here. Um, so this is where we where we have our fee estimator. The thing about CUP is that I mean, like sometimes it's really hard to give very general information because of some of our programs may be different than others, and like something with admissions. So for example, business, uh, mm -hmm. the tuition fees are different than film or animation. So usually like our, like our cheapest programs are like business and humanities, mm -hmm. and, are, and those are about $19,000 a year. Mm -hmm. But then we have programs in film or animation that are like more than between thirty to $33,000 a year. So some programs, so it's, it's, it's good to, to check. Uh, or, or tuition fee estimator, and that will give you a little bit. That will give you a better idea because, yeah, because I, I I can give you an estimate, but then it doesn't really give answer the question for the, for somebody. So somebody would but, think that it's cheaper or more expensive. But on average, for your like regular uh, bachelor studies, you know, BA or business, it's around nineteen thousand per year. Yeah, so business is about nineteen thousand. So 19, that one is the, the popular one, nineteen thousand, and then yeah, film is the most expensive. And that's about thirty thousand dollars a year. Okay, uh, and uh, are there any scholarship opportunities for students for international students? Well, Canada doesn't really have many scholarships available for students. Mm -hmm. We do mm -hmm. have a few, but mm -hmm. they're very competitive. So very we good. have one called Capex, that mm -hmm. one which is ten students a year. So for example, this year only one international student is getting it, and that one awesome. covers ten thousand dollars per year. So it's but it's very competitive. You have to have very high grades and very mm -hmm. and lots of and lots of volunteer experience. Or like, um, I believe we had uh, we had a student four years ago from Mexico. He oh, yes. received the scholarship, uh, um, sports yeah, scholarship, soccer. I think, he right? He, he was yes. playing soccer, so he I, I believe he got a full scholarship actually. Yes, he got it, it, his scholarship covered sixteen thousand dollars per year. Okay. So it's still not full scholarship, but mm -hmm. I mean, like his program is about he's starting business, so mm -hmm. something he's starting. So he has to pay three thousand dollars a year. Okay, so that's a really good deal. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, uh, to answer Trevor's uh, question, it is possible, but it's highly competitive and uh, it's very limited. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it like happens. No, it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen all the, every year. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, before I go into Samira's question here, um, so obviously uh, Capilano is a public university, so I assume uh, students are able to work part-time during their studies, 
mm -hmm. uh, 20 hours per week, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, during their scheduled breaks, they can work full time. Yes. And uh, you've mentioned this a uh, few times on your presentation. Once they graduate from your programs, uh, either diploma program or a four year bachelor's degree program, they're able to apply for up to three years of post graduation work permit. Okay, that is correct. Okay. Um, you mentioned about uh, practicum and co op programs uh, that you have. And uh, what are the, gen you actually talked about this too, general English requirements for those uh, who hold an IELTS score already. Is it 6.5 for all your programs? It's 6.5. We have two exceptions. Uh, mm -hmm. One is the, the Diploma of Tourism Management for International Students. That mm -hmm. one we ask for a 5.5 IELTS. Mm -hmm. And then our Global Hospitality and Tourism um, post baccalaureate Diploma. Mm -hmm. That one will require a 6.0, nothing lower than 6. Point, no, nothing lower than 5.5. Mm -hmm. But you have to have 6.0 in writing. 6.0 in writing. Okay. Uh, or they can just simply uh, take our EP program and enroll. Uh, in exactly. those programs directly. Exactly. Uh, and, without, yeah. Yeah. And we're also now taking the Duolingo English test too. So if anybody needs to take the Duolingo English test, we'd, we're taking it. Will oh, be, great. Uh, for the general, the, the, the 6.5 equivalent is going to be 110 for us. 110, okay. Yeah. That's good. Um, Samira just asks, in case of uh, study permit is denied, uh, I assume I assume she's talking about the five thousand uh, dollars deposit paid. Uh, if the study permit is denied, uh, do students get this money back, or do they get a portion of it? So, if, this, if, the, if the study permit is denied, we do we do give the tuition deposit back. So it will be a five thousand dollar tuition deposit that we want, that, that we give back to the student. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the student um, decides to withdraw for any other reason, then we keep a $500 administrative fee. Okay. So I guess that answers Samira's question. Uh, Kaori is confused about the pathway uh, or how, how it works between SSLC and uh, Capilano. If, if you finish EP at SSLC, can we transfer to EAP090? At Capilano directly. Uh, yeah. I that's yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a yes. Yeah. Yes. So I already got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kari, you actually uh, uh, you got the question right. So, you study for 12 weeks at our EP program, English for Post Secondary Education, and then that is that transfers to EAP 090 at Capilano. Mm -hmm. So, you'll right. be able to uh, enroll uh, directly in EAP. And then you can also take uh, one course with EAP 90. Um, do we have any other questions from our audience? Uh, I guess I, you answered uh, all my questions here. I prepared some questions, but you, you actually, uh, we talked about it during your presentation. Thanks, Kari. Um, let me see. And oh, I, I just wanted to ask this. How many uh, students are enrolled in Capilano and do you know the percentage of international students? Oh, so right now we have about 9,000 students and mm -hmm. about 2,500 international students from about 80 countries. Wow. That's a big number. So yes. that's good. Yes, and I think I'm mean, like does the does the I think the, the number is going up in the next year. And uh, you just uh, launched uh, or opened a new campus uh, in Lonsdale, right? Yes, we opened a new campus in Lonsdale in January. And so that one is mostly for postgraduate programs, okay, and for continuing education. So if you're coming for an undergrad program, you won't be taking courses there. So uh, the postgraduate program, like Nabu and others will be offered in Lonsdale? Uh, NABU, yeah. So like the ideas for NABU and mostly the tourism programs. Okay. Uh, global hospitality. A lot of our global, global hospitality programs are there. Okay. Uh, there is uh, another question from Kari. Uh, how is the class structure from uh, fall 2020 at Capilano? That is a great question. And <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have a, a, a very concrete answer. Mm -hmm. So basically, our announcement is we have... Um, we have something called that we call an, an adapted model, 
so but right now I think that we're analyzing which courses can be taken online mm -hmm. and which one or like which ones can be in person because as I mentioned Capilano doesn't have all the theoric programs that most universities do we have mm -hmm. uh, or acting we have uh, film and, and animation uh, yeah. music programs and some mm -hmm. science some science courses as well where mm -hmm. the students actually need to be in campus so on campus so they can actually take the courses because they need to use the, the resources from the university and they won't have them at home so we are trying to figure out what's going to happen i think that like the idea and this is me speaking not the university speaking but the idea is for us to figure out which courses can be offered online and so we can so those courses will be will be offered online and then the courses that we really have no no choice will will have to be on campus okay. i guess the announcement will come uh, this month yeah possibly. so i mean like right now the, the the thing is we have just keep checking our website we have a when you go to our front uh to our, to our front page mm -hmm. we, all, we have all the updates so whatever right, whatever right. update you see there is what i have to <laughs> all right i see yeah. Uh, Ursula had a question here. Uh, how do I find a placement? Uh, do you arrange the co-op program? Uh, okay, for some programs, yes. Uh, actually, for most programs, we do help you. We have somebody who's going to be helping you with that. Um, mm -hmm. In some cases, the students choose to find their own co-ops as well. So, for example, in North American Business Management, mm -hmm. we do find a work practicum for the students, mm -hmm. but some students Sometimes they want they want something very specific that we're not going to be able to offer them, mm -hmm. uh, so they go and find it on their own. So if they, if the student like if the student is very open about the, the options, we we do help them with the with the work placements. I see. All right. Um, okay. I guess uh, that's it uh, from our end here. Thanks, uh, Christian, for joining us today. It was a great mm -hmm. presentation. Um, it will, it's always great to uh, see our partners join our webinars. Uh, it's really good to see you live too, but um, <laughs> face to face. But uh, I guess in the new normal, we have to continue these uh, webinars yeah. for for some more time. Yeah, no, um, wonderful. Yes. Uh, so thank you, and uh, we we will be continuing with our uh, live webinars uh, every week. So this Thursday. We'll continue with uh, LaSalle College, Vancouver uh, at 6 p.m. on Thursday, uh, Vancouver time. And next Tuesday, uh, we are with TRU, Thompson Rivers University. And next Thursday, we will have the Navitas Group, FIC, joining us, actually. Um, so we'll continue with our live sessions. My friend Jim will uh, share our uh, website and uh, how you can uh, easily join our uh, programs, SSLC's programs, uh, we offer uh, online pathway program as well as uh, our general English programs as well. Uh, please follow us on our uh, social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, and uh, you can register for our upcoming events. Uh, my friend Jem is sharing the links uh, on the chat box. You can see it there. Um, it's uh, it's. It was a great uh, webinar again, Christian. Thank you. And thank you to our audience for joining us today again. Um, and I'll see you again this Thursday. So thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, it, is. it was It was very nice seeing you. Thank you. And uh, have a great Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Samir. Bye.